Hi, this is Linda with Watery Wishes and today we are going to make a bouquet of flowers using one stamp and a lot of masking. So I stamped and cut out the masks before I started this project, before I started filming it. And I stamped them on some full back or full sticky back post-it notes and cut multiple sheets at the same time. Now if you don't already know when you are masking things you have to work from the front backwards so anything you want to be in the front you stamp first you mask and then you stamp the subsequent images. So because this flower is so different for each petal, you're able to turn it around and make it look like a bunch of the same type of flower, but it doesn't particularly look like the same exact flower unless you look really close to see what's been done. Now, as you can see, as I'm laying down the masks, you can still see the outlines of the stamp and that's because when you cut masks you want to cut them right on the line and not outside the line so that the stamping sort of meets and that little bit of height that the mask creates doesn't hamper your stamps and you don't have to go and touch it up so much later on after you've pulled all the masks off so there's very few gaps between the stamping. Now I've sped this up a little bit because it's just the same thing over and over again. And things you have to remember is you must clean your stamp off in between every single stamp. Now I'm using a slightly damp baby wipe. You can use a stamp chamois, whatever you have to clean the stamp off, but you, you need to make sure it's, it's cleaned off well so you don't get any marks where you don't wish for them to be. Now this is always the best bit when you take all the masks off and you get to see what you have underneath because it always looks like a mess when the masks are on. I love that. I love that little bit there. Okay so now I'm sort of just drawing in some stems. I'm drawing them out with pencil first, some really light strokes if I believe that's a 2B I have. And that's just to map where everything is going to go. It doesn't have to be exact the first go round, you can change it up when you put it down permanently with the marker, whichever marker you use. but. You have to remember that if you are going to colour with Copics, it has to be Copic safe. And if you are going to colour your image in with watercolours, it has to be permanent and not affected by watercolours. Now, you can probably hear a little bit of static in my voiceover. And that is most likely because... It's summer here and I have my air conditioner on and my computer is almost thermal throttling a little bit and its fans are up high and it's making a little bit of noise. So I'm sorry about that but it can't be helped even though it's 3.30 in the morning when I'm doing this voiceover it's still fairly hot but you get that when you live when you live in the tropics. So Usually I would use, a, I have an EK Success journaling pen that's uh, 2.5 and I couldn't find it at the time I was making this card 
and I use those because they are Copic safe but I also have a memento marker which doesn't draw as well as the journaling pens but it did the job fine so I couldn't decide which colors I wanted my flowers so I stamped them on another piece of cardstock and I'm coloring one pink in the center and I'm using grays to denote white on the outer tips and I'm going to color the other one yellow I end up choosing the pink after this but I figured I'd leave this in because it gives everyone a bit of an insight onto how on the fly my card making is I might have part of an idea when I start making a card and like this I sort of knew I wanted to use that one flower and create a bouquet that was it because I got the kit just under a week ago and I like using my new stamps. So I'm just going to colour the bouquet in pretty much the same except I will be using a little bit more of the darker colour and the C markers in the flowers that are underneath. This creates just a little bit of depth to the image because they're under and they will be a little bit darker. I probably could have given it a little bit more contrast but I didn't want to push it seeing as the inner petals are such light colours. The colours that I'm using for my Copic markers are up in the left hand corner of the screen. I'm putting the darkest colour in the centre of the flower and then I am using my mid-tone to flick that out a little bit further. I'm using a little bit of C1 on the very very tips of the flowers and then I'm using the RV000 and the C00 to sort of blend that out a little bit so it, it's almost white in that in the bits that would be the most highlighted so not the inside not the ends but sort of a little bit in the middle where it would be the lightest because the color the, the color meets the white and as I said I'm probably going to use a little bit of C1 just to darken up the bits that are in behind and I use a little bit more of the uh, VR52 and the VR55 in some places just to get that little tiny bit of depth. I probably could have taken it a bit further but I didn't want to take away from the lightness of the card. And as I was colouring them I tended to work from the front flowers towards the flowers that were underneath. That way I had a better idea of what petals went with which flowers. Here I am just putting a little bit of that C1 marker in some of the depth. Now I'm using my greens to colour in the stems and I'm not overly worried about it. Um, I do want a bit of variation in blending but I'm going to put a bow over the middle of where the stems intersect so that part will be covered up and then I'm going to put a sentiment down the bottom so that's the coloured in bouquet and I spared you my horrific bow tying skills I'm not very good at it. it, took me forever, but I got there in the end thanks to my 
my reverse tweezers it's one tool that everyone should have is those reverse tweezers they're just miraculous that bit of ribbon I have is very close to the Simon Says Stamp I believe it's Slate cardstock I may be wrong it's one of Simon's darker grey cardstocks and it just had a little bit of fluffy edges from my trimmer which doesn't have a very good cutter on it now what I'm doing here so I'm taking just a little bit more off the sides I'm taking a little bit more off one side than the other to center that image up slightly so it becomes a little bit less than uh, five and a quarter by four just I think like it's six of an inch on each side uh, sorry not a sixth a sixteenth of an inch like very minuscule and here is my pre-cut card base which I'm scoring at four and a quarter and I always fold away from where I've scored I find that it gives me less cracking um, some people prefer to do it the other way there really isn't a right or wrong way it's just what you feel works best for you and what gives you the best results and I also butt the card up against the edge in the scoring in the score buddy so that I get a very nice straight edge and both edges sort of both sides of the card meet perfectly here I've pulled out my Simon Says Stamp thanks die it's got a shadow and the word now I cut them down so I could just send them both through at the same time you obviously don't have to cut them down as long as what you're sending through is uh, not wider than six inches you should be fine I'd forgotten to put in the yellow centers on the flowers so I did that just there now I'm sending my pieces of cardboard through my Sizzix big shot now I'm living life dangerously here my reverse tweezers aren't fine enough to get in the holes so I use my cutter bee scissors I wouldn't recommend doing that I was being very careful but you're just as likely to snip your sentiment in half and have to do it all again and my multimedia mat has decided to somewhat play nice with me today I have discovered the solution to unclogging the fine tips and you'll get a look at that later on very shortly my father used to be a welder and he used to use these they're tiny little files that are like the width of pins a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller sort of like varying needle sizes and they have little files on them and they work perfectly for unclogging those tips here I am just making sure my vellum is cut down a little bit and straight and the reason I'm using the vellum is I found that the thanks was getting lost on the card with the bottom of the stems so I just stuck a bit of vellum behind it and it knocks that color back a little bit See, here are these tip cleaners. They all come in various sizes. And they have tiny little files on them. That one was a little bit too big, so I went for a small one. And they get even smaller than that one, so perfect for unclogging 
the tips of those bottles. See how well that came out after I <laughs> cleared it? It's, I'm going to say it's probably going to be one of my must-haves in the craft room, those tip cleaners. So yeah, I, I stole that packet of tip cleaners off my father. I think I was 18 years old, so quite a while ago now. So here I am just scoring the vellum down and I put the sentiment onto the vellum first and then I used where the sentiment was to stick some glue behind the vellum. Then I just folded the sides down, scored them so that they were nice and tight folds, secured them with a little bit of the red and white polka dot washi tape, which I use because I don't like red and white polka dots. Here you can see that my matting panel is slightly narrower than the width of the card and what I did is I made sure I covered it right up to the creased edge and I'm just taking the tiniest slivers off the side of the opening of the card and it worked perfectly. So that was the card using Simon Says Stamp sketched flowers from the Octavo card kit. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. I'd love it if you subscribed if you did like the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget, have fun crafting your imagination.